Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the bench of the John Audio Tech Show, where we do stuff and things here. Hopefully, you stick around here, and uh, we'll talk about microphones. Well, actually, a power supply for Electret condenser microphones. So, in the previous video, I talked about there's a little Electret condenser microphone capsules you can buy for a song. And um, found some really good ones, and I upgraded this microphone with the new capsules. And uh, really delighted. It really works well. So what do you do when you find something that you really like? Well, you hoard. So I went and bought a little baggy more of them. Ten more of them. Because I have some project ideas. Probably won't use all of them, but I'll use a few of them. So today I want to talk about a power supply for these Electret condenser microphones. I'll just call them ECMs. Because they do need power. So I have a little circuit set up here. Just one channel though. So it's powered by a 3 volt coin cell. And I'll turn it on. And uh, check. You can hear me. I'm talking into this microphone here. Now these microphone capsules are so sensitive, you don't even need a microphone preamp. I wouldn't say in all cases, but I'm just plugged into this TDA7267 amp directly into its input. There is no um, preamp or anything. And I have the level turned down a little bit because, well, if I turned it up, it would start to feed back. Let's turn it up. Okay, oh, there you go. Depending where I place the microphone, you can hear it's trying to feed back. Oh, there we go. Let's turn that down. So I just have this little trimmer here. Okay, let's do a little walk through the schematic. I'm calling it plug-in power, which is usually reserved for the recording device that supports power for the ECM. But, yeah, I'm just calling this little box gadget thingy schematic I'm making a plug-in power unit so I'm want to power it with the CR2032 lithium coin cell the reason for that is well, I want it to be pretty small of course it's got to be portable for field recording battery supply is going to give you minimum noise and I should get 200 hours of recording time using that size of battery because the entire circuit two ECMs plus the indicator LED, draw less than 900 microamps. So I have the indicator light on there because if I don't, I'll end up leaving the thing turned on and run the battery down anyway. And you can see here, as I demonstrate it, I turn the power on. You can see it's plenty bright. It's only drawing 150 microamps for that indicator light, so that works out pretty well. Next is an anti-pop circuit. What that does is remove the power on and power off pops. It doesn't do it completely, especially at power on, but it gets rid of that loud click sound because it gently ramps up and down the current when you turn the thing on or off. And because these little coin cells have a significant internal resistance, I think these are around 50 ohms or so, and plus the time constant circuit's resistor adds a lot more. Well, some of the signal from the microphone is going to get to this point, and it'll go over to the other channel. So this capacitor acts as a low impedance short to ground for any signal. So it's going to eliminate that crosstalk problem. And finally, the circuit. This is just for one channel, of course, for the ECM itself. So to set the operating point of the little JFET amplifier in the capsule, there's the 2 kilo ohm resistor, 2.2K or whatever. You know, they're, most of these capsules are specified at 3 volts and require a 2K resistor. But instead of just using a 2K resistor, this is going to be actually a potentiometer. Hopefully I can find a stereo potentiometer of that value 
and then I can turn the uh, signal up or down because, yeah, those are very sensitive capsules, and I, sometimes I want to be able to turn them down if I'm recording something a little louder so I don't overdrive my sound recorder. So connected to the wiper arm would be a capacitor to remove the DC component, and that goes to the output. Now this resistor here just shunts away voltage that might show here. If nothing's plugged in and you power this up, then you go to plug something in, you get a loud pop. Well, that'll shun away that DC component. I'm also showing in dotted line a resistor here, which is just this resistor, but with the lower value to act as a low-pass filter. ECMs are excellent for picking up bass, and sometimes you don't want all that rumble in your audio, so you can make a high-pass filter at, say, 50 or 60 hertz or so that starts to roll off the bass. I mean, it doesn't completely eliminate it. It's just a slow 6 dB per octave roll-off that helps to remove some of the rumble. I'm not sure I'm going to incorporate that in my circuit, but it's, you know, it's an option. So that's basically it, just a little circuit to power some ECM microphones. I'll put it in a small box. I'm thinking I might even put a couple microphones in the box so it could act as a microphone itself. And I could have a switch so I can switch for internal or external microphones. Okay, so I plugged this camcorder into the output of my little circuit here. So now, I guess it's this side. So now I'm recording from the little microphone here. Hopefully I have this level set good enough that it doesn't overdrive. It doesn't seem like it is. It is turned down quite a bit. Just want to see what it sounds like. I don't know how good the amplifiers and stuff are inside this camcorder. But that's one benefit of a high sensitivity microphone. You can turn the levels down so you don't get all that background hiss from the preamps inside the recording device. They're usually not going to be the highest quality with this consumer equipment. So yeah, that's one benefit I think. What I should try is turn the level down in the camcorder and then turn the sensitivity up on the little power supply and see how that does with the noise. Okay, well the microphone level was pretty low already, maybe around 40%. So I turned it down even more and then I turned the sensitivity dial up on my little power supply here. And it probably can go up more. An issue is there's still some static when you adjust the control. I know that trimmer is not the best thing. Even though DC is not getting through that capacitor, what's happening though, I think you're changing the level so that capacitor discharges into that and you still get a little bit of noise from that control. Ideally, you don't want any DC going through that, but not much I can do there. I could put the volume control over here and just use a resistor that would eliminate that noise but it adds extra components well i can't think of anything else to say i will wrap it up here and i thank you for watching